so merciful unto us as sinners. And I'm so glad this morning that He is. This morning, if we had a title to put on this message, it would be the Thanksgiving message. I ask that you turn with us to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And we'll be reading from the 17th through the 20th verse. Such a wonderful message. The resurrection to find this morning. The Apostle Paul was speaking to the church at Corinth. He was telling them they were having problems in the church. And he was directing these problems, addressing these problems. And he wanted to make sure that they understood the message. And this morning, I want you to understand the message. I'm going to try to make it as plain and clear as I can this morning. It may be too simple for, for some. And the message uh, this morning, they may touch the hearts of someone this morning that don't know Jesus, and that is our prayer this morning, that you find out what Thanksgiving is truly about. We'll read in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and we'll start in the 17th verse. The Apostle Paul said, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Yet you are in your sins, and they also, which have fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, then we are all most, men, most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. That's the wonderful Thanksgiving message this morning, is that Christ is risen. Now listen, this is to validate the whole Christian message this morning. It either stands or it falls in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this morning we come before you now. We thank you, Father, that you came in the flesh as the man Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that you died on the cross as the man Jesus Christ for our sins that you raised the Heavenly Father in your uh, likeness, dear God, and in your image, dear Heavenly Father, on that day, dear God, on the resurrection day that you got up out of the grave for us, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God. And Lord, this morning we pray that this message, dear Heavenly Father, will ring out to the hearts of all those this morning that may be listening, dear God. For we love you, Father, and we pray for those that could not be here we pray for those that would not be here. Lord, you know their hearts and you know their desires and you know their needs, Father. Now, Lord, we pray for everyone that raised their hand this morning, dear God, that had a prayer request, dear God. Lord, you know them by heart and you know them by name, dear God. So, Lord, this morning we pray that you'll deal with each and every one of them, Lord, in your way and in your time, dear Father. For we know that your time is not our time. And Lord, your way is not our ways, dear God. So Lord, we love you this morning. We just ask, Father, for the anointing of your word on every heart and every life here. And Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now we see here, if there is no resurrection, then there is no gospel. Now I'll tell you that this morning. Just think of all the inspiring messages that have been preached down through the years. May I tell you what? I have heard some of the greatest messages in my life right here. I've heard Brother Roger preach some of the greatest messages that I ever heard. But let me tell you something. If Jesus did not raise from the dead every message that he has preached, has been in vain. Why? Well, just think of all the books that have been written about Jesus Christ. The books of inspiring hope and love and faith that we've read that has brought us to where we are today. 
If Jesus did not raise from the dead, all those books were worthless and all those words that have been written are in vain. Wow. Well, when we get into the Thanksgiving message, we'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. Think of all the millions of people who have come to faith in Christ and entrusted their lives to them. All the men who gave their lives in their faith to Him. All of those who have died in the Roman exposition where they came in and they just slaughtered <coughs> Christians in that day because of their faith. There were so many. Some estimate to be six million in that time. So many that put their faith and trust in God. They died believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if Jesus Christ has not risen, then their faith was all in vain. Wow. The missionaries. The missionaries who have went into these countries many years ago when there were still people that hated other people in the world. There were still cannibals. And they would go into these places and these people would take these missionaries' lives. But yet and still they were willing to go because they know that there were those out there that were dying without Jesus Christ and they were willing to give their lives that they may come to know Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ had not risen, all their faith and all they've done, the gospel would be in vain. Think about all the orphanages that have been instituted because of people that love Christ that took in these young people, these children that had no one because of their love. You know where their love came from? From their faith in Jesus Christ. Boy, I tell you what, if Jesus Christ has not died and risen, that all these sacrifices, they're all in vain. Wow. This morning, the worst part is that if Jesus Christ had not risen, we are still in our sins. Right. We are still in our sins. Think of all the horrible things that have been done in this life. All the horrible things that's been done in our lives. Wow. When we say we've come to know Jesus Christ, but yet still, if He has not risen, then we are still in our horrible sins. We are still in the same place, destitute for an eternal hell if Jesus Christ had not risen. Such a terrible place to be this morning without Jesus Christ. So it's a terrible place to be not believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Why? Because he overcame death that we might overcome death. That we might be forgiven of our sins. If not, those sins are still tied to our neck and we're still drowning in that sea of sin this morning. Those who died in faith, they've all perished. All of their virtues have ended. Wow. They'll suffer the same fate as the worst that lived in this world. They're going to suffer the same fate if, if, if Jesus Christ had not rose from the dead. The Apostle Paul said, and if he but be not risen, your faith is in vain, and yet you are still 
and your sins. What's so sad is we as ministers and people that love the Lord and went to the bedsides of those dying, and we have took the word of Jesus Christ. We have taken it there beside those beds to comfort them in their time of need. In their time of their life, when they need a word, when they need someone to hold their hand and say, you know what? Jesus is waiting on the other side. What comfort can we bring if Jesus Christ is not risen? What comfort can we take to those this morning that needs encouraging in their faith that are weak, maybe that are stumbling, maybe that need to draw their strength from us, and we have no strength because Christ is not risen. What a sad world this would be, but this morning I want to tell you that if that was so, life would be so unfair. <coughs> Wicked people who are caught up, who have gotten by with their evil lives, they have lied, stolen, deceived, raped, killed, exhorted, and they will never have to pay for their deeds. The same as we. It's sad to think that evil triumphs over good. But if Christ had not raised from the dead, this is the very thing that would happen. Wow. But I will tell you this this morning. If Christ did not rise from the dead, why do we have judicial laws? Why do we have good Versus the evil. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus Christ did triumph. That's the Thanksgiving message this morning. That Christ triumphed over death. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen this morning. He said he would rise on the third day. And he did just what he said he would do. How did he rise from the dead on the third day? It was by the Spirit of God that Amen. dwelt in him, that raised him from the dead. Yes. And hallelujah this morning, if you have that same Spirit, if you have been born again, one day you will rise Amen. also. Amen. 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 That's the Thanksgiving message this morning. Amen. Life is not worthless, can I tell you that this morning? We're living in the most bleak and dark days of man's history. The day that we're living in right now. Jesus said that as time progressed, that times would grow worse and worse. Men would wax worse and worse. That the love of many would wax cold. And this is the day that we're living in today. And let me tell you, we need a hope in something. We need a hope in something that is alive, and that is Jesus Christ. He's alive and well today. And we can thank God this morning. We can thank God. Oh. See, this morning we find that today there are people that they have problems. They have problems with drugs. They have problems with alcohol. Why? Because they don't know this Jesus that we know. Right. I was talking to Brother Tommy the other night. We went to this place. And as we sat there, we began to talk about our past. You know what he done for me, Brother Tommy? He took away the desires and the needs of this physical body from the drugs and the alcohols. Is that right, Brother? Amen. Well, I tell you what, he done that for me. But we find that today there are those today that still have problems with these things. 
Why? Because they don't have Jesus like they need Jesus. Amen. This morning we're offering this Jesus. They do these things to deaden the pains of this life. Let me tell you what, Jesus died on the cross to deaden the pains of this life. Yes, he did. To take away these things that we suffer in this life. But now Christ is risen from the dead and our preaching is not in vain this morning. Listen to me. If you don't know Jesus, our preaching is not in vain. God is merciful this morning yes, to forgive you of whatever sins you have in your life. This is the Thanksgiving message. That you can be thankful this morning that He's offering Himself to you this morning. Thank you, Lord. What's He offering Himself to me about? He's offering Himself that you may know His love, His mercy, and His free pardon of sin through grace. That He may forgive you of all the things in your past life. And He is willing this morning. He is a God this morning that will forgive you. He will love you. And He will, I tell you what, He will take you in. And you can be part of the family of God. Amen. There's no place that I've found no greater love than in the family of God. In the fellowship of those who love God. Well, I tell you what, we like I say, we went to this place uh, Friday night or Thursday night, I think it was. Thursday night. We went to hear some gospel singing, but it, it turned out to not be <coughs> such a, a gospel singing, but we still enjoyed the fellowship of those that were there in, in our church. And there were some others there that, that we knew um, boy, I tell you what, there's nothing greater than have the love and fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, I tell you what, it does pay to serve the Lord and to live a better life. I'll tell you that today. I have never, ever lived a life like I live when I come to know Jesus Christ. And that is the great thanksgiving that we have this morning. Our faith is not in vain and it is confirmed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is confirmed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you what. The message that I want to give to you, if you know Jesus Christ, you're no longer in your sins. That's right. Amen. Man, that's the greatest thing that I can ever tell you this morning. If you come to know Jesus Christ, you are no longer in your sins. God has forgiven you. And the blood of Christ <coughs> indeed cleanses us from all sins. All sins, not just some. God does not just pick and choose what He chooses to forgive. The Bible says when we come to know Jesus Christ, that He will forgive us of all Amen. our sins, Amen. no matter what they were. No matter. Now we see that there are those men and women that sit in prison today that have taken the lives of people. But let me tell you something. God will forgive them also if they will just call upon His name. There's no sin that He will not forgive except rejecting His Son, Jesus Christ. And don't go there, please. Please do not go there. Accept Him before it's eternally too late, before you die. Your record has been expunged. Now, for those that went to Winterboro, that means they all been wiped away. Amen. 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 God has washed us clean, and we have been forgiven. 
those who died in faith are now with the Lord Jesus in his presence. Presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Why, well, I tell you what, so all those wonderful words that we've shared with those who are on their deathbed waiting to see Jesus, those words have not been in vain. Those words of comfort that we shared have went with them into eternity. I hope and I pray that on my deathbed one day, there will be someone sitting there with me. And they'll be holding my hand and telling me about the validation of Jesus Christ's resurrection, how much he loves me, how much he waits to see me when I cross from this life into the other. I hope that it's one of my young people here today. I hope that one of my young people, maybe it'll be Emily, maybe it'll be Reagan, maybe it'll be Caitlin, that'll be sitting there and say, Brother Frost, Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting to carry you home. Wow, I can believe that because of Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Amen. Amen. And through the ages to come, God will reveal himself and his great riches. His great riches. And we can be thankful. We can be thankful that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he raised from the dead. Hallelujah. It does. It does pay to live a righteous life. It does pay to live a life in Jesus Christ. Yes, it does. Why is that? Because the Bible says that one day there's coming a time when sinners shall be judged. When sinners shall be judged. You, you understand this morning. I want you to understand this. That one day there's coming a judgment day. There's coming a day when all of those who have never given their hearts and life to Jesus... Oh, here it comes, preacher. You preach the same message. Yes, I do. The same part of the message. There's coming a day when you don't know Jesus Christ and you have died, you're going to be judged for your sins. Amen. And guess what? There's no hope. Once you die in your sins, you'll be judged for those sins. Amen. And when you're judged, do you understand... Listen, all of you that was born in my time understand about punishment. <laughs> when we done something wrong, let me tell you, it wasn't time out. <laughs> it wasn't standing in the corner. Let me tell you what it was. It was the wrath of of my parents. Mm -hmm. It was the wrath of my parents. And one day, without Jesus Christ's blood covering our sins, we will face the wrath of God. And the wrath of God means eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Now, when we were getting the wrath of our parents, we would get the belt or the hickory or the stick or the broom or whatever, whatever was handy. Yep. Yes, sir. But when it was all over with, you know what? Our parents would take us back in and he would love us. Mm -hmm. But when we stand to be judged of our sins before God and we receive the wrath of God, there is no more love of God that's going to take us in. There is no more wrath of God that's going to love us. You will be doomed for an eternal hell where you will see the wrath of God for all eternity. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ has made it possible to avoid this awful place. Amen. How do I do that, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
by solely asking Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life when the Holy Spirit calls. There will be none, none, that will be able to escape the wrath of God when you stand before Him. Psalms 90 and 8 says, Thou hast set our iniquities before Thee, our secret sins are in the light of thy countenance. Let me tell you something. God sees and knows every yes, sin that has ever been in your life. It is recorded. It is recorded. This is one of those things that Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, in 12 and 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, every secret thing, everything that you think that is hid can be hid from man, but it cannot be hid from God. And He is going to bring every one of those works back before you when you stand before Him. And He's going to say on such and such a day, do you not remember? And you're not going to get a chance to say, but God, no. We're going to move on to the next event in your life. Did you not? Re and it's going to go on down the line. And you're going to see every sin Every evil deed that you have ever committed. The Lord said in Jeremiah, He said, I, the Lord, search the heart, and I try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring light to the hidden things of darkness, and I will make the manifest of the counsels of the heart. God said, Be sure your sins will find you out. There you go, sister. Your sins shall surely find you out. It may not be in this life, but when you stand before God, your sins shall surely be brought before you. See, this morning, the message is God has made a way of escape. God has made a great thanksgiving for you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. Isn't that wonderful that God loved us enough that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I thank God this morning. I thank Him so much. And one day, good will triumph over evil. You know, you see that little commercial where the little evil milkman devil and the little good evil angel devil or whatever you want to call him. There's a war that's going on in this life right now. Good versus evil. Satan versus the Lord. And I'll tell you what. Evil is running rampant in this world. We need more Christians. We need more soldiers. And today, you can be one of those soldiers. This morning I'm thankful for the life that we have in Jesus Christ and those who believe and live the life. And I ask you today, are you living that life? Do you believe in the resurrected Jesus Christ? Do you believe that He died on the cross of Calvary for your sins? Do you believe this morning that He can wash away those sins? Do you believe this morning that all you have to do is call upon His name? If that's so this morning, I ask you to make that stand as they get a song. 
I ask you to make that choice this morning. Would you this morning give your heart and life to Jesus if you don't know Him this morning?